R7, vertical expressions. We use rational exponents to express wood. An alternative notation for wood is vertical notation. So we call this as a vertical symbol. And then we use the n for the index. When your n is equal to 2, it will present square root. When your n is equal to 3, that will be the cube root. When n is equal to 4, that will be the fourth root. And also, we use the a to represent the radical. When you see the radical symbol without the index, it represents the square root. But usually, we don't put the 2 here. Radical notation. Let a be a real number, n be a positive integer. Then a to the power of 1 over n be a real number. When we have the nth root of a, you could make this n become the exponent of 1 over n. Okay, this is very important. Okay, make sure you guys remember this. Okay, now. When we have an a to the power of m over n, since this is 1 over n, we could use the previous formula. We could make it like n root of a. And then the m is going to be outside of it. The m is just the exponent for the whole thing. Okay? Or you could put the m here, a to the power of m, and then we're going to take n root of this guy. Okay, now let's try to do this example together. So we have a cube root of 27. I want you guys to apply this formula. y to a to the power of 1 over n. And in 27, we could break it down. You could use the G diagram to break it down. 27 divided by 3. So 3 times 9 give you 27. And then the 9, you could break it down at 3 times 3. Right? So we could put like 3 to the power of 3. And then we still have the exponent, 1 over 3. Now, you're going to multiply it. 3 times 1 over 3. You cancel out the 3, so it's going to be equal to 3 only. Okay, B, negative 4 roots of 10,000, okay? When we have the even number for the roots, make sure this guy has to be positive number. The negative is outside of the vertical, so this is good, okay? Make sure when the n is an even number, this guy has to be the positive number. Okay, uh, let me show you guys how to do this one. Okay, we have a 10,000 here. If you have a no idea how can write it like this way, so you could use the chi diagram. So 10,000, I could make it like 100 times 100, right? 100, I can make it like 10 times 10. This guy, same thing, 10 times 10. Okay, so first, I try to use the formula, make it like... The fourth root of negative fourth root of a ten thousand, I can revise it by ten thousand to the power of one over four. Okay, right? And then because of this tree diagram, I could revise it like ten to the power of one, two, three, four. The fourth in here. Okay, and then at the end, I carry over the exponent here. Okay, right? And then when multiply it, I cancel out. So I left with negative 10. Okay, right? Good. Okay, try to do the passive.
So the cube root of negative 216. Okay, one more time. This is odd number. So I can have a negative number for the Vatican. Okay, I use the formula. The cube root, I could make it like 1 over 3 here. Okay, so let's try to break down this guy. Okay, 216. I could break it down, um, divided by 8 here. And then 27. Okay. And then 27, I could make it like 9 times 3. And then 3 times 3 here. And then the 8, I could make it like 4 times 2. And then 2 times 2. Okay, you can see I want I want to have a cube root here, so um I could put it like this: negative two to the power of three, one two three here, times three to the power of one two three here. Okay, make sure you only look at this guy. Okay, three three three. Okay, right, and then one over three. So this exponents, I'm going to distribute it like one by one here. So you cancel out one by one. So distribute, distribute for this guy also. So cancel out, you only left with negative two times multiply it. So you only with three. So that will be equal to negative six. Okay, this is how I take care of the vertical. Okay. So look at my solution here. Same thing, we use the formula first. And then they could directly write it like negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 6 times negative 6, that would be equal to negative 216. This one may be easier, but you need to have an idea that negative 6 times negative 6 times negative 6 equal to negative 216. Okay, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, D. Okay, one more time. First thing, you need to look at it if this is an even number or odd number. When you have an odd number, the radicand is negative number, that's okay. But when you have an even number, this number has to be positive. So, in this one, you're going to say it's not a real number. Okay, try the E. Okay, E, we have the cube root of 125 over 512. Okay, 125, you could break it down with 5. Okay, right? So 125 equal to 5 to the power of 3 here. So this is good. I could see, I could cancel out, right? And then 512, you're going to divide it by 2. And then I could divide it by 2 again. Divide it by 2. Divide it by 2. Divide it by 2. And then, oh, that's a really long road. 4 and 2 here. And then 2 and 2. Okay, let me circle all the two here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I have a nine of them. Okay, so if I put it here, 512, that will be equal to 2 to the power of 9. Okay, so keep working on this guy. 
first, one hundred twenty-five over five hundred twelve to the power of one third. I just used the formula, and then one hundred twenty-five, which is going to be five to the power of three, and this one. 2 to the power of 9, and then 1 over 3 here, okay? Let me write one more step here. This is mean 5 to the power of 3 times 1 third. On the bottom, 2 to the power of 9 times 1 third here. Okay, right? So multiply, you cancel out, you left with the 5 here. And this one, 9 divided by 3. So you have a 2 to the power of 3 here. Okay, so that will be 5 over 2 times 2 times 2, which is going to be equal to 8. Okay, so that will be my final answer. Okay, look at my solution here. We write it to the formula. And then um, they find it out 8 times 8 times 8 is already equal to 512. Okay, so when they multiply it, final answer is going to be 5 over 8. That's okay also. If you could realize 8 times 8 times 8 equal to 512, you could use this one. Okay, and for me, I may not be able to realize that 8 times 8 times 8 equal to 512. And that's why I use the cheat diagram to break it down. Okay, both methods are the same thing you could get the same answer, 5 over 8. On the exam, as long as you show me your work, you get the correct answer, you get the credit. Okay, try the F. Okay, F, you have a negative fifth root of negative 243. Again, this is the odd number, so it doesn't matter if this is positive or negative number. Okay, right? And then 243, break it down, divided by 3. Divided by 3, divided by 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is means 243 equal to 3 to the power of 5. 1, you could circle it, it will be easier to look at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so negative. 3 to the power of 5. Okay, right? And then distribute it, you cross it out. So you left with negative, negative 3. Means negative, negative, that will be positive. So positive 3 here. Okay, look at the solution here. Same thing. Okay, so one more time, when you guys see um, the radical root, first you're going to apply the formula, okay, and then try to use the cheat diagram, write it to the exponent, so you could see um, it's supposed to be cancelled out like that way, okay. Okay, example two, um, for this one, that will be to the power of 3 over 4, so I want you guys using the second formula here, this one, a to the power of m over n, the n, the denominator, that will be your n foot, and then the m here will just like the exponent. Okay, a, 16 to the power of 3 over 4, okay, 
uh, you don't have to make it go back to like the fourth wood. Okay, you could just break it down with the sixteen. Four times four, two times two, two times two. So I could rewrite it like two to the power of fourth. And then, okay, two to the power of fourth, which is gonna be sixteen, and we still have the exponent three over four here. And then multiply it four and four cancel. So you left with two to the power of three. Okay, make sure to the power of three means two times two times two, which is gonna be equal to eight. Okay, you don't have to use this formula, I think. Okay, I would think uh, you would just keep this fraction here and then rewrite this guy to exponent and then multiply the exponent to see what you get. Okay, B, um, this kind of the questions, you guys need to be careful. Remember the woods here. If n is a even number, the a here has to be positive number. Okay, the a has to be greater than zero. Okay, greater than or equal to zero. So this guy, when you see the negative number for the Vatican, you have to be careful. Okay, I will just write one more step here. I want you guys to make sure. For the b, negative 64 2 over 3 okay so if i use that formula that will become the cube root of negative 64 and then the square is going to be here okay so this is good because the 3 here this is the odd number so this guy it doesn't matter it's going to be positive or negative so this is good okay so first, I'm going to double check if this is the odd number. When, it, when we have a negative number, this is good. We can find the solution. And then 64, we try to break it down. Um, 8 times 8, 2 times 4, 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 2 times 2. Okay, so all this. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, six of it. So that will become negative two to the power of six and then two over three. Okay, right? Negative 64, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So two to the power of six. And then now you're going to multiply it. Okay, divided by three, divided by three here. So I have negative 2 and 2 times 2, you're going to get the 4 here. So this is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So negative 16, that will be your final answer. Okay. So check your work. Okay, C. negative 121 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, be careful this exponent, the 3 over 2, is only applied for 121. If I wait one more step, the negative should be outside of this guy. Okay, if they have the prevalency, negative 121 to the power of 3 over 2, then this one that will be a no real solution. Because we have the square root here. This is a even. So this guy has to be positive when we have the prevalency. Okay. But since the negative, that's a, without the prevalency, the negative is going to be outside of this guy. So the a is still positive number, even though we have the square root. Okay, 121 
break it down, eleven times eleven, so that will be negative eleven square three over two, and then multiply it, so that will become negative eleven to the power of three. So that will be one hundred twenty one times eleven. You're gonna get negative one thousand three hundred thirty one. Okay, check your work. Okay, D, y to the power of 7 over 8. You may ask, hey, uh, nothing we can do, right, for this guy, because y is a variable. Um, that's the one thing you guys need to pay attention of it. Remember this one? This is the even number, okay? So if we apply the formula, we're going to have a 8 root of y to the power of 7 here. Okay, since this is the even number, y has the condition that y has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, check the work. And this one, um, 7z to the power of 4 over 5. The 4 over 5 is only applied for the z, not with the 7, okay? So the 7, you could keep just the 7 here. And then this is the fifth root. When 5, the 5 is an odd number, so the z doesn't matter, it's going to be positive or negative. That's it, okay? That will be the final answer. That's a no condition for the Z here. Okay, F. 12 Q to the power of negative 1 over 4. Again, this exponent only apply for the Q. And remember what is negative means? You're going to flip it to the bottom, right? So if I write one more step, that will be the 12 on the top. Q to the power of 1 over 4. Okay? The negative, make it like flip it to the bottom. And then 1 over 4, this is means the fourth root of Q here. And this is a given number. So the Q has the condition that Q has to be greater than zero. Okay, strictly greater than zero. Okay, this one, it can be um, greater than or equal to zero. But this one cannot because the Q is the denominator. If this is equal to zero, 12 divided by zero will be undefined. So the conditions are a little bit different. It only like Q strictly greater than zero. Okay, last one. 5x plus 2y to the power of 1 over 6. We could rewrite it like to the six roots of this guy. Again, this is a even number. So 5x plus 2y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay? Okay, example three. Assume all the variables expression represent positive real numbers. So not like the previous example, we have the condition that this guy has to be positive because 
all the variable will present the positive. So we don't care about that part. So pretty straightforward. This guy seven would of n to the power of three. We could rewrite it like n to the power of three over seven. Same idea. This one we assume this is a positive real numbers. So it's just like the whole thing, the 10x to the power of 1 over 4. See, this is going to be r to the power of 4 over 3. Easy, right? Okay, for this one, we could distribute the 8 first. Okay, so you're going to get this one. This is a 1 here, 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is going to be 16. And then the fifth root is going to be divided by 5, so 8 over 5 and 16 over 5. Okay, this one, that will be 1 over 3 here. Okay, the cube root become 1 over 3. You cannot distribute it for this one because this is um, addition, not the multiplication. You could just leave this one as your final answer. Another formula, if n is an even positive integer, then the nth root of a to the power of n, you could cancel out the n here. But because n is a even number, we have to make sure the variable of a has to be positive. And that's why we're going to put the absolute value here. If n is an odd positive integer, so we don't really care about the a is a positive number or negative number. So you could cancel out and live with the a in here. Okay, so just make sure n is even number. You're going to put the absolute value of the variable. Okay, let's try to do it together. Okay, first one z to the power of 6. There's nothing here. This is, means like the square root, right? That's a 2 here, actually. So we try to write it with the 2, so we could cancel out. We could break it down z to the power of 3, and then the square. Okay? So one more time, this is a square root. I just keep the square root. The 6, I could break it down like 3 times 2 here. Okay, why do I want to write it like this way? Because I want to apply this formula. N and N, I could cancel out. Okay, and one more time, when N is even, I need to add the absolute value. Okay, so the 2 and 2, I could cancel out since this is a even number. I will put the absolute value of this guy. So that will be my final answer. Okay. Okay, B. Um, 7 roots of t to the power of 7. And this one, t 7, is an odd number. So we don't care about the variable of t is a positive or negative. We could just strictly cancel out here. That is only equal to the t. Okay, same idea. They just apply the previous formula. Okay, C. I have a square root of 81 all to the power of x as to the power of 10. This one similar to the a here. Okay, I know this is a square root. So I'm going to rewrite it to square 81 9 times 9, right? And then the r, that will be 4 and 2 here, right? The 2 and 2, I could cancel. Or 4 times 2, that's equal to the x. And then the s, same thing. I could put 5, s to the power of 5, and then square. Okay? So, um, this square root is applied for everyone. So you could cancel out, cancel out, and cancel out with this too. Final answer, 
are left with 9, r to the power of 4, s to the power of 5, okay? But since this is a even number, I'm going to put the absolute value. Okay, oh, he, um, they went one more step here because the 9 is a positive already. I could take it outside. And R to the power of 4 is going to be make it like positive as well. And then S to the power of 5, I have to put the absolute value. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter. You could keep this one has a final answer as well. Okay, or doesn't matter. Both of them are good. Okay, D. Oh, um, this is a fourth word, so it's, it has to be make sure this guy's gonna be positive. So I cancel out. I left with absolute value of negative three, and absolute value of negative three, which is gonna be positive three. Okay, E. The fifth word of m over 10 here that's the two ways to do this kind of the questions either you make it like m with the 2 m square to the power of fifth and then you cancel out you left with m square i don't need to put the absolute value because this is an odd number okay right or I'll show you guys another way to work on these questions. M to the power of 10. I could use the PFIS formula that will become 10 over 5 here. Right? This is an N, this is an M, right? M over N. And then I simplify it 10 divided by 5, which is going to be M squared. Okay? You're going to see same answer. Either way. Okay, right? Okay, F, this is a square, so cancel out, but N is even, so you're going to put the absolute value of 3x minus 4. G, um, this is a quadratic equation. You could use the x method to factor this guy. When you factor out, you're going to get x minus 5 here. And again, this is a square, 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 cancel out. So n is a even number. So we're going to put the absolute value of this guy. Okay, right? Rules for vertical. We still have the porter wood when you have a nth wood of A times nth wood of B. Since both of them, they are using the nth wood. So I could combine it together. Okay, the nth root of a times b. The quotient rule, same thing. You could uh, break it down into two or you could combine it when they do have the same root. Then power root also. Okay, the nth root of nth root of a. So you could combine it m times n here. Okay, A, this is a square root times square root of 45. Both of them are square root. So I could just combine the square root together, 5 times 45. Okay, which is going to be 225. So square root of 225, that will be to 15. Okay, B, both of them are fifth roots, so I could put it together. And then, when they have the same base, you could add up the exponent. And you're going to cancel out the fifth here. It's only equal to n. And this is the n is an odd number. So it doesn't matter to put the absolute value or not here. Okay, this guy. 11 over 169. So I could break it down with the square root of 11 over square root of 169. And that 
you can't do anything for square root of 11. But this is going to be 13, right? Okay. The 6 root of a over b to the power of 12, you could break it down just like the proxy here. Right? And this one, you could make it like uh, 2 times 6. So you cancel out the 6, you have the b squared here. Okay, you could combine it, so this is going to be 5 times 4. The 20th root of 17. Same thing, 2 times 6, that's going to be the child. Okay, more, more example. Square root of 288, uh, you could break it down uh, 2 times 144. And then you guys know what is a square root of 144? That would be 12, right? The 2, we can't do anything. So that would be 12 and then times square root of 2. Okay, B. Negative 8 with the cube root of 125. 125, you divide it by 5, you're going to get 25. Divide it by 5. Okay, so this guy, I could rewrite it like cube root of 5 to the power of 3. And then we cancel out. You're left with negative 8 times 5 here which is going to be negative 40. Okay, right? Okay, C. The cube root of 128, A to the power of 6, B to the power of 8, and C to the power of 10. So that's a cube root. So 128, break it down with... Divided by 2, 64, 4 times 16, 4 times 4, 2 times 2, 2 times 2, 2 times 2. So I have how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, 7 of it. Okay, let me write one more step here. This is means 2 to the power of 7, A, 6, B, 8, and C, 10. Right? Okay, the cube root here. So I can simplify this guy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do 2 to the power of 6 times 2. This one, I can divide 6 divided by 3, right? So this is good. I keep this guy here. The B over 8, I can't divide it by 3. So I'm going to break it down like B, 6 times B squared. Okay, 6 plus 2, you're going to get the 8 here. And then C, same idea, C, 9 times C, 1 here. Okay, 1 plus 9 is going to be equal to 10. I still have the cube roots here. Okay, right? Now, this one, I could put 2 to the power of 2 square to the power of 3. Okay, 3 times 2, I'm going to get the 6 in here. I keep this 2. And then the a, same thing. a square to the power of 3. b, same thing. b square to the power of 3. And I still have the B square here. Okay. And then one more. C, I could put... Uh, I don't have the enough space. So let me put it a little bit down here. C cubed to the power of 3. And I still have the C1 here. Okay, you got can see here, these two I could cancel out. I have this guy, I could bring it outside. This one, I could bring it outside. 
this one and this one i could bring it outside so this is two square which is going to be four and a square b square and then c cube okay what do i left inside let me use different color so you can see This is going to be inside of the cube wood. So I left with 2, B, square, and C. Don't forget, this is always keep it as a cube wood. So that will be your final answer. Okay. Okay, you can see like the variables. If the exponent can be divided by the wood, this is good. But if not, you could break it up. Like x here, you're going to break it up to... If b to the power of 8, you're going to break it up to b to the power of 6 times b squared. Okay, remember when they have the same base, you're going to add up the exponent here. Okay, right? So 6 divided by 3, you're going to get b squared here. Okay, make sure you guys understand how to do this kind of the questions. Okay, operation with verticals. Verticals with the same vertical and the same index, such as these two, aligned vertical. So you could consider this is a fourth root of 11 QP, and this is also the fourth root of 11 QP. You could think about it, this is just like 3x and this is a negative 7x. We call this as the 9 radical. Okay, for example, 2 square root of 3 and 14 square root of 3 are 9 radicals. Okay, um, you could imagine this is just like the variable of x, 2x and 14x. They're the 9 terms, right? So you could add or subtract it together. Same idea with the radical. And these two are unlike verticals because this is a 6 root of 5. This is a cube root of 5. So this is unlike. You can't combine the 9 terms. We add or subtract 9 verticals using the distributive property. Only like verticals can be combined. Example 7, adding and subtracting 9 verticals. So for part A here, square root of 5 PQ, and this is a square root of 5 PQ. This is the 9 radical. So we're going to do the subtraction, 14 minus 11. Okay, you could factor out the 9 radical, but if you can handle it, you could just subtract it. So 14 minus 11, that will be 3. 3 square root of 5 pq okay b this is unlike radical all right but we can make it happen okay 75 you could break it down to 3 times 25 here and then since this is a square root and then we have the b cube here so we break it down at b square times b so square root of 25 which is going to be equal to 5. And then the b square, you cancel out the square, you get out the b here. So inside, you left with 3ab, okay? Square root of 3ab. And this one also, 12, you could break it down like 4 times 3 here. Square root of 4, that will become 2. So I only left with square root of 3ab as well. So now this is the 9th radical. So you could subtract it, 5b minus 2b, which is going to be 3b. Okay, right? Okay, c. Let me show you guys how to do with the c here. Okay, c, um, 81, you could break it down to 3, right? 3 to the power of 4 and then x5 y7 okay plus the cube root of 24 
I could break it down like 8 times 3. x, x, and then y to the power of 4. Okay, let me get more space here. Okay, one by one. The cube root of, this is a 3 to the power of 3 times 3. Okay, 3 plus 1, which is going to be equal to 4 here. And then x5, I could do x3 times x squared. Y7, that will be 6 times y. And then another cube root, 8 will be 2 to the power of 3 times 3. And then x8 will be x6 times x squared. y3 and y. Okay, one, one more step. That will be 3 to the power of 3 times 3 x3 x squared. The y here, that will be 2 times 3, and then y. And then another cube root, that will be 2 to the power of 3, 3, x squared times to the power of 3, x squared, y, 3, and y. Okay. Now, we're going to cancel out. Cancel out. So I take out the 3, take out the x, take out the y square. And this one, take out the 2, take out the x square, take out the y. Okay, so only this thing is going to be inside of the cube root. Okay, so 3x, y square. And then left with the cube root of 3x square y. This one, take out 2x square y, left with 3x square y. Okay, right? So um, this is gonna be the ninth radical, okay? Exactly the same thing, but look at here. This is a 3xy square, but this is a 2x square y. So this is not the nine terms. They do have the nine radical, but here this is not the nine terms. So we can't do anything. We only can do factor out the radical. Keep root of 3x square y. And that's it. Okay. This is just not the nine terms. You can combine it. Okay, same thing. Okay, multiplying radical expressions. So um, for this one, we're going to distribute one by one. Okay, just use the FOIL method. So distribute 5 times 3, 5 times negative radical 2, and 3 times this guy. And then radical 32 times Vertical 2 here. So do it one by one. So that will be 15. And you can't do anything for this guy. Okay. Uh, square root of 32, you could break it down like 2 times 16, right? 2 times 16. So square root of 16, that will be equal to 4. And then 4 times 3 here. Okay, square root of 16, that will be equal to 4. So I put it outside. Square root of 16, I got the 4 here. Okay, 1 by 1. Um, 15 minus 5 square root 2 plus, this is going to be 12 square root 2. Minus 4, square root 2 times square root 2, it means like square root of 4, right? So uh, you could think about it, you're going to get out of the square root. So that will become 2 here. Okay. So this is going to be the 9 radical. Okay, radical 2, radical 2 so is 9 radical. So negative 5 plus 12, which is going to be equal to 7. And 4 times 2, that's equal to 8. 
So we could combine these two nine terms. 15 minus 8, that will be 7. Okay, B. This is like A plus B times A minus B. Remember um, the previous lecture, the R6 and R5, we talk about the formula. A plus B times A minus B equal to A squared minus B squared. Okay, A squared minus B squared. Okay, take the square here. So that'll be negative six. Rationalize denominator. It means we don't want any radical on the denominator here. Okay, let's try to do it together. So before we're working on these questions, do you guys will have the formula that when we have a n root of a to the power of n, we say we could cancel out the n here. That would be equal to a here. Okay, so now we do have a 2 over square root of 7. Think about it, square root of 7. That's a little 2 here, right? Means I want to multiply the same thing. So I can make it like square root of 7 times of square root of 7, which is going to be 7 squared here. By this formula, that's actually there's a 2 here, right? So I could cancel out. That means that will be equal to 7. So if we want to rationalize the denominator, when this is the square root, what are we going to do? We're going to multiply square root of 7 over square root of 7 here. Okay, when you cancel out, that's going to be equal to 1. That will be the original questions. So now, when I multiply it, I do have a 2 square root of 7 on the top. And this guy, if I write one more step, that means 7 square. Square root of 7 square. So cancel out. Square root and with the square. Final answer, that would be 2 square root of 7 over 7. That would be my final answer. We just don't want any radical on the denominator, okay? Okay, right, final answer. Okay, B, this is the cube root of 4 over 9. Okay, cube root of 4 over 9. First, I could break it down to cube root of 4 over the cube root of 9 here. Okay, right? They do have the same radical. I could separate it. And then, this guy, the 9, I could rewrite it to 3 square. Okay, now think about it. What do I need to multiply here? When this is a cube root, I have to multiply the cube root. When it's going to be square root here, I'm going to multiply the square root. Think about it. What do I need to multiply? I have a free square here already. I need one more to cancel out the cube root, right? So I'm going to multiply the cube root of 3. Whatever you multiply on the denominator, you're going to get the same thing on the numerator. Now on the top, I could combine it. Both of them is going to be cube root 4 times 3. That's going to be equal to 12. And then on the bottom here, I write one more step. That's a cube root. If I combine it together, that will be 3 squared times 3. So that will be cube root of 3 to the power of 3. Now I could cancel out. I left with cube root of 12 over 3 here. So now my final answer, the denominator, they don't have any radical. So this is good.
Okay, right? So we write it 9 to 3 square. And I need one more, okay? 2 plus 1. I need one more cube root of 3 in order to cancel out here. Okay, cancel out. So that will be your final answer. Okay. Okay, this one, simplifying vertical expressions with fractions. So you can see I want to simplify first and then I want to rationalize the denominator. So first step, both of them, they do have a cube root, so I could combine it together. This is a fifth over a square, so I could cancel out, left with the a third here. And then b, this is 1, and this is 5. So I cancel out, I should left with this guy. Okay, this is a cube root, and then this is a b to the power of 4. So I could break it down, look like this guy. Right, 3 plus 1, I'm going to get the 4 here. And then these two, I could cancel out, I could get out 1 of the b. Okay, right? So now I want to rationalize the denominator here. Same idea with this guy. I have only b to the power of 1 here. So I need 2 more. Right? So I'm going to multiply cube root of b squared. One more time. This is a cube root. This guy has to be cube root. And then I have a 1 here. So I need 2 more in order to cancel out. Whatever you multiply on denominator, you're going to do the same thing on the numerator. Okay, one more step. On the top, both of them has a cube root, so you could combine it. And then this guy, we cancel out. I have one more b here. So b times b, which is going to be b squared. Rationalize a binomial denominator. Okay, binomial means uh, we do have a two terms on the denominator. The previous example here, this is only one term, monomial. One term here. Right now, we do have a two terms on the denominator. Before we're working on it, you guys need to know what is the conjoint K means. Conjoint case means uh, when you have a one positive, you're going to make it like one negative. For example, vertical A plus vertical B, the conjoint K will be vertical A minus vertical B. Or if I have a vertical A minus vertical B, then the conjoint K will be red A plus red B here. Okay? Or for example, I have red 5 minus 3. The conjoint K will be red 5 plus 3. Okay? We only change the sign here. Plus become minus. Minus become plus. This is called the conjoint K. The use of conjoint case allow us to rationalize denominator or numerator with two terms. Okay, binomial means like two terms. For example, I want to rationalize the denominator. So I see there's a vertical on the denominator here, but this is two terms. So what we're going to do, we're going to multiply the conjoint K. What is the conjoint K of this guy? That would be red 7 minus y, right? So I'm going to multiply it. Same idea. Every time when you multiply something on the denominator, you're going to do the same thing on the numerator. Okay. Okay, before we're working on the multiply for this one, I need you guys remember the formula. Remember a plus b times a minus b. That will be equal to a squared minus b squared. I need you guys to remember this formula. 
it is very useful when you working on the rationalize the denominator with the binomial terms. So this one, five over square root seven plus y times square root seven minus y. And make sure that's a preference. Okay. So these two guys, when you multiply it, either you're using the FOIL method, distribute one by one, but I highly recommend you guys using this formula. Okay, so I have A plus B times A minus B. It's supposed to be equal to A squared minus B squared. So on the numerator, I just keep this guy here. On the bottom, A plus B times A minus B, which is going to be equal to A squared, minus b squared. So your a, that will be west 7. Your b, that will be equal to y. So west 7 square, you're going to cancel out. So you're left with 7. And then minus y squared. So now my denominator, they don't have any radical. Uh, on the top, you could keep this one has the final answer, okay? Just like I didn't distribute it because I know I can't simplify it even though I distribute it. And then on the bottom, 7 minus y squared, okay? So rationalize the binomial denominator. You need to multiply the conjugate key and then use this formula. A plus B times A minus B equal to A squared minus B squared. Okay, I want you guys try to do this one by yourself. Okay. Rationalize the denominator. So this is the binomial term. So we want to multiply the conjugate. Key. What is the conjugate key of this guy? That will be red 3 plus red 2, right? Make sure at the parenthesis here. Okay, you're going to distribute one by one or using the a plus b times a minus b formula. So here I use the formula. So I'm going to take square of a, which is 3, take square of b, which is going to be 2. 3 minus 2, that will be equal to 1. On the top, distribute 1 by 1. So this is going to be where 6 plus where 4. Square root of 4, which is going to be equal to 2. Okay. That's it.